G'day, welcome to part two of the profile of the E4900 server. In this module or part of the video, whatever you want to call it, we're going to look at all the boards that I've got. We'll have a look at the inside of the mid plane where all these connect to. What you're looking at here are the two system controllers. Now mine are running in redundant mode, which means SC0 and SC1 are in failover. So they're both the same. However, there is a very big difference. I wonder if you can tell. Turn the boards up the right way. Now these are computers in their own right. So, if I pull these closer together, I want you to see whether or not you can tell what the difference is. Okay. The difference is in the real-time clock batteries. This is an original one. This is a new one. When I turn this on, these boards boot very differently, uh, which is a concern, obviously. This is the original real-time clock, time-of-day, timekeeper RAM battery that came with the system controllers. This is the new one. These are, I think they're 75 megahertz Spark computers in their own right. They run VxWorks with Java Flash. You can also set your, if you have a look down here, you see there you can actually set it to either RS-232 or RS-422. Come along here somewhere, I'll find it in a minute. Where's the uh, setters? for flash. Ah, here they are. Now, I've played around with these um, on this board only, trying to get it to boot and nothing changes. What it means in failover, it means if one board fails and you replace the battery, it picks it up off the other board and vice versa. These are what you use to configure the platforms, to check the platforms, reboot them, reconfigure them, um, I believe the system is capable of dynamic reconfiguration, which means if something falls over, you can, you know, use and use some, you know, um, reconfigure it, replace what it, replace the part that's busted, bring it back up online, and everything goes back the way it was. So as I said, these are 75 megahertz Spark PCs in their own right. And this is how you control everything. You start your platform, stop your platforms, reboot the platforms, reconfigure. The whole lot is done through these boards. Um, so that's the system controller. Over here and there are my two processor boards. So we have four UltraSpark processors under here. As I said, I don't know how fast these are. They could be anywhere from 1.3 to 1.9 gig. Um, I believe they could even be dual core. It'd be nice if they were. I believe I've got 8 gig of RAM in each board, which means I've got 16 gig of RAM across the whole server. Um, but I'll, I've got to confirm that later. I haven't actually pulled these out. I have not pulled these out. So... I actually haven't looked it up. I'll probably get around to doing that in part three of this video when we fire it up. So these are all, um, you can see here, if I turn it up the right way, how about I walk around the other side? That might be a good idea, mightn't it? So you can see there your RAM configurations for each processor. And that's how it's configured at the moment. You can put more RAM in it, as you can see, but I'm probably just going to leave it with its 16 gig I've got plenty of this RAM lying around, but um, at the moment, until I can get this going, I'm just going to leave it as its factory settings. Same with this board here. So we've got another four processors here, another lot of RAM there. You've got some, I think that's RAM controller under there. Across the back here are the big DC to DC filter caps and filtering and power smoothing for the processors. And there's obviously the serial number and part number assembled in the UK for Sun Microsystems. And under here, as you can see, are the four 
individual processors. So that's my two processor boards. Come over to the card cage and we'll also have a look at the power supply while we're here too. This is the card cage and as you can see it's metal at the back. With the card cage, the first two PCI slots, PCIX slots, I'm sorry, are short card only. The other five here can take short and long. As you'll see here, you can read it there. Um, this is what I like about Sun, is all the documentation they provide on the actual componentry. So you can see here, these two are only 33 megahertz only, and these two are 100 megahertz, or these five, sorry, are 100 megahertz backwards compatible. This is the big DC to DC converter for the card cage. We have some ASICs under there, I believe, some con PCIX control... Ca uh, control and regulation chips there so that's the um, that's the car case the other one still in the unit exactly the same over here are the two repeater boards these are the two repeater boards and these are what allow everything to talk to everything and interact with all the uh, card cages processors um, system controllers all that See, they're both basically the same, as you can tell. I don't actually understand the repeater boards. And there's the big interface connections. I don't actually understand how the repeater boards work. Um, someone might want to tell me how they work. When I've dealt with Sun in the past, I've normally dealt with, you know, those and those there. And I've never seen a removable repeater board. So I'm not actually 100% sure how these work. Be nice to know. All right, let's go around the back of the uh, back of the unit again and have another look. Here we are in the back of the unit. Now this is just a blanking plate. I'll just get that out of the road so we can have a better look at the mid plane. So here we are in the back of the unit. Okay, up the back there, I believe is the ID prom card. And this is the processor case. There's the mid plane with your big uh, interface connectors. There's the mid plane part for the repeater boards, again with the big mid plane connectors. The inserts for the system controllers. Now, I don't think I've got this one undone. No, I haven't. So that's basically the E49. See, we've got three big fans here. So this fan blows up and into there. The card cage has two lots of fans. We've got a fan tray here. I've got another fan tray here. Now, this comes out from the other end, obviously from the front of the unit, whatever you want to call it. So that's, that's essentially my E49. Now, in the third part of this series of videos, um, which I'm hoping... I may not get recorded today. I'm going to power it up or show you as far as I get powering it up. Um, and I'll show you the two different system controller board power ups that occur. Um, as I said, one boots straight into wanting to start the platforms, the other one doesn't. So I have a sneaking suspicion whoever replaced the battery didn't actually know what they were doing properly or they've done it in failover state and the whole thing's just come crashing to the ground. Um, I did notice that when I originally pulled the pulled the controllers out because I wanted to have a look at the controllers to make sure they were all right when I purchased it. And I did notice the batteries were a bit different, but I didn't think that affected it until I tried to start it up. And um, it didn't start, and so now I'm wanting to get it started. The plan for this unit originally and i'm hoping it'll still work and i'm sure someone will tell me whether or not it will was this was going to be my everything what i was hoping to do and i know this will do it is put uh, a linux Q QM qemu kvm container on it or numerous containers run uh, my windows domain from it obviously in a, in a container 
run my XP machine from it, my Windows 2000 machine from it. The reason I say that is where I help my mate out the TV station, we've got stuff that runs embedded 2000 and embedded XP, and if we've got to get software for it, I test it out to make sure it's actually going to work properly, as well as obviously putting OpenStack on this. Originally, what I was going to do was have this unit, this little Sun uh, SCSI unit here, with its four individual connectors on the back, for data storage, obviously, and the D240 all linked in together with a firewall, and that was going to be my entire IT infrastructure, externally and internally. Now, I'm hoping that'll work, because if it does, it means that if I can get this going, I then don't need this, I don't need that, I don't need that, the whole lot. It was told to me at the time that I could use my Sunray 2 thin client to run it all, or do the administration, get into it, check it all out. That was the other goal. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, yeah, see, fingers crossed, that that is still achievable. Now, if it's not, that's fine. I can probably work something out around it. Someone did tell me uh, at the time of purchase that I could put some a couple of PGX64 frame buffers in this. So one in that card cage and one in the other card cage and get that all connected up. Now, I don't know that'll actually work. I actually doubt that'll work because this has no keyboard and mouse I.O. capability at all. So that probably wouldn't really work because the idea behind this is you administer it from a terminal and you connect to it as a user profile. Um, what I would really love is if Oracle's Red Hat Linux would run on these because if it runs on these, then I'm right. I'm, 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 I'm on a winner. If it doesn't, I've got a problem. So... That's sort of where we're up to. I will try and get a power-up video up either in this set of two videos, or if not, I'll do it tomorrow, obviously being Australian time. And just while I think about it too, and I, I, I don't want people to think these are only available in Australia, I should actually tell you this. These are auto-ranging power supplies. Sorry, I'll get my finger out of it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in part one, they don't just take 240. Obviously, they'll take American 120. And with American 120, um, so it's, uh, I believe it's 12 amps with that, but someone will tell me. If your power supply is 200 to 220 volt, you need 12 amps on the input. And if it's 230 to 240, which mine is, I need 10 amps on the input. So, yeah, it, it basically takes either 120 or 240 vac. I don't know whether these are auto-ranging. This one specifically is made by FD, FDK Corp. You can see there. The light will get out of FDK Corp. And for those that like the numbers, there are all the numbers there. So this is the third power supply. This supply is all right. A bit dusty, but it's all right. But I just don't have enough power in my house to power up you know, all three power supplies at 10 amps, that's 30 amps. So, what I'll do is hopefully get another video up today. If not, I'll get it up very soon on the power up of this. This is basically all the, the componentry of it. So, in part three, we'll power it up, and hopefully someone will be able to tell me how to reset this bloody thing. The other thing, too, which I would like anyone to confirm or deny... And again, that would also be handy. That, I believe, up there, that card's the ID prom. Now, I read somewhere that if I take that out, there's a jumper there that shorts it out and resets it. But I'm not overly sure about that either. And I don't want to go digging around in this if, if I end up completely fucking it up because it means I've wasted 750 Aussie bucks on a system I can't use anymore. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and part, stay tuned for part three, either in this set of videos or in the next set. All right, thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick follow-up video to the parts of the E49. This, I believe, is the prom card.
the ID prom card. Now, this is the one I was told that if I short something out on it, I can reset the ID prom. Now, I don't believe that, um, mainly because I'm not into shorting out IC chips. I get the light out of the road there. That's the prom card, which just, you've got a locating hole just there. You can see where it mounts in up the back there on that. So that, that's what the prom card does. Now that just basically, um, it's a bit hard for me to get in, but basically you reach in, you line it up like so, making sure not to bugger it. Little locating pins that'll hopefully sit on it. I've got that round the wrong way, have I? Oh no. Sorry. It, it, okay, there it goes. That just plugs onto that. Now, I read that if you short that out or boot the unit up without that in, it will reset everything. Now, I don't believe that. And if someone would like to tell me, because the last thing I want to do is fuck with that, because I do know with these units, you start fucking with that and you've basically bought a lemon. That's the end of it. All right, please like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. For